This is a video about ultrasound in the diagnosis of endometriosis, ABCDE. My name is Suzanne Johnson and I'm a gynaecologist from Southampton. Looking for bowel nodules now in the lower rectum, upper rectum and sigmoid. A bowel nodule is again ectopic endometrial tissue in the muscularis layer this time, resulting in inflammation, smooth muscle hyperplasia and fibrosis and it results in a hypoechoic mass in the muscularis layer. Mostly this is in the rectum, whether it's upper or lower. 20% of cases are in the sigmoid, 15% in the right iliac fossa, either appendix, ileum or cecum, and it's often multifocal. Looking at normal bowel first, the probe is in the posterior fornix, and you can see here again, you can see normal posterior vaginal wall. You can see here the normal overlying uh, peritoneum and it's not thickened. This is the pouch of Douglas, tiny little bit of fluid. And then you can see that this white layer is the serosa. The dark layer here with the white line in between, that's the muscularis layer. And the white layer is where the outer longitudinal and inner circular fibers um, join each other and you get a little white line of connective tissue that, that makes you realize that's got to be the muscularis. Deep to that, you've got the submucosa and mucosa, and then it repeats again on the other side, submucosa and mucosa, and this one is the muscularis, this layer, and then here you've got the serosa. So the lumen of the bowel is here. Endometriosis is always in the anterior wall, and this is what it looks like. A little bit of normal muscularis, so this is the layer that we're looking for, muscularis, there it's normal, there it's normal and here you can see this thick lump of DIE that has caused smooth muscle hyperplasia. So you can find bowel nodules particularly through the posterior fornix. So we're used to looking through the anterior fornix because you can see the cervix, you can see the sliding sign of the cervix against bowel, but you'll struggle to see bowel nodules because they um, will be hidden by the cervix. Whereas if you put your probe in the posterior fornix, for both an antiverted and a retroverted uterus, you can't see the cervix because you've pushed it that way, but you will be able to see bowel nodules and adhesions. So this is how we do it in the longitudinal view. This is a cervix. You can see the external os, the cervical canal, the internal os. There's a little bit of dark, that's just some mucus. You can see the posterior vaginal wall. And then this bit is the posterior vaginal fornix. And the probe here is in the anterior fornix because I can see the cervix. What I need to do is move it from the anterior fornix into the posterior fornix. And the way we do that is we with very gently withdraw the probe a little bit and then angle it more in a posterior direction and gently insert it. And this is what that looks like. So there's the normal sliding sign. I'm pulling it out slightly, angling it backwards. And there you can see posterior vaginal wall and the probe is now going into the posterior fornix. And that allows me to see the pouch of Douglas in the bowel in a lot more detail. It's much easier this way to see bowel nodules. I'll just show you that one more time. There is the cervix in the longitudinal plane. I'm going to pull the probe out a little bit, then angle it more backwards toward the sacrum and very gently nudge the cervix out of the way, stretching the posterior vaginal fornix over the tip of the probe. And now I can see the pouch of Douglas really clearly. So I'm in the posterior compartment now and I'm looking for DIE. So again, draw the line where the bladder attaches to the anterior uterus. Then here is the internal os, behind that is the torus. And then I've drawn a line past the external cervical os. This is the recto-vaginal septum, where I've never seen endometriosis. Here is the posterior vaginal fornix, where I often see endometriosis. This is the peritoneum lining the pouch of Douglas. I've got through this line separates out lower rectum from upper rectum, and that is at the point of the uterosacral ligament insertion on the cervix. And any bowel that's beyond the level of the uterine fundus is called sigmoid. So common locations for DIE in the posterior compartment are the posterior vaginal fornix, 
the retrocervical area of torus and uterosacral ligaments, and the rectum with the lower rectum and the upper rectum. But the disease is often multifocal and it can attach everything together, resulting in a frozen pelvis. So the classification for bowel DIE is that superficial bowel endometriosis affecting the serosa only is not DIE. To have DIE, you need to have an involved muscularis layer. And as we just saw in the diagram, the lower rectum is below the torus. The upper rectum is above the torus, and it is this that is visible at laparoscopy. And the sigmoid is above the level of the uterine fundus. So here you can see the dark muscularis layer. And here you can see a very superficial nodule of endometriosis that's not made the muscularis layer thick, so it's not DIE. But here you will see a nodule of DIE in the lower rectum. There's the probe going into the posterior fornix, that's the posterior vaginal wall. A bit of fibrosis there, and here is a nodule in the lower rectum. It's connected to the posterior vaginal fornix, but not involving it, because you can see that the posterior vaginal fornix itself is very white, uh, very dark and thin, so it's not, not thickened and it's not involved. And here you can see the bowel nodule, and this is the muscularis layer. If you look overlying it is the submucosa, and it's white and it looks quite regular, so it's probably not involved. And this is the muscularis layer of the posterior wall. And when you put colour on, you can see this nodule does not have much vascularity, it's not suspicious. So this is an example of involved lower and upper rectum. Um, looking at the picture here, uterus in the longitudinal plane, draw that line, bladder, internal os, torus, and you can see that this bowel nodule affects both the level below this line, below the torus, which is lower rectum, and above it, which is upper rectum. And this is what that will look like on, on the moving image. There's the probe going into the posterior fornix. You can already see the bowel nodule. It's very large very large just there. I'll just let that play one more time. Coming into the posterior fornix, you can already see it. There's dense fibrosis behind the cervix and an attached nodule which stretches from lower to upper rectum. Here I've got a uterus with a, a very large plaque of endometriosis affecting the upper rectum and the sigmoid and this is what that looks like. There's the uterus and there comes this really thick dark plaque of DIE and a huge ovarian endometrioma all attached to one another. So this is upper rectum and sigmoid. Sometimes you see separate bowel nodules. So in this example we've got nodules in the lower rectum and in the sigmoid colon and I'll play this one. Here we are in the posterior fornix, the cervix is up there somewhere. And you can see, sweeping from side to side, there's a very large bowel nodule there in the lower rectum, in the anterior wall. Um, it was uh, a nodule that's attached to the torus and the uterosacral ligaments, but it centers on the insertion of the posterior fornix to the, to the back of the cervix. And then when we looked a little bit further, um, near the left ovary, as you can see, um, there are two nodules in the sigmoid colon um, there, there they come again, just one and two there. And you can see some normal muscularis in between, there's some normal muscularis there. So two nodules in the sigmoid colon and one very large retrocervical um, lower rectal nodule. How to measure a bowel nodule? Um, a lot of people measure the distance from the anal verge, but I find this very difficult. The most common location for bowel DAE is at the torus, and at that point you're around eight centimeters from the anal verge. What we do in Southampton is we measure the distance of the nodule to the torus, whether it's mainly above the torus, and that's upper rectum and it's intraperitoneal, or whether the nodule is below the torus, um, which is lower rectum or retroperitoneal. And this is where bowel surgery uh, can be very difficult and people often use a bowel surgeon for endometriosis surgery in this area. We then measure the nodule in three dimensions, length, depth and width, on 2D and on 3D. Um, and it's important to measure the length of a lesion as a curved line if the lesion is not linear, I'll show you. 
You then measure the angle of the involved muscularis layer and um, the degree of affected circumference in the transverse plane. And these are markers for the risk of bowel stenosis um, from the lesion and comment on submucosal involvement. So this is what it looks like. Here again is a retroverted uterus when the torus is around there somewhere, but you can see here that there is something attached to the, the back of the, the uterine wall above the level of the torus. And in this plane, you can see this is the bowel nodule. There's some normal muscularis there. It becomes normal again here, and it's at here and here. So this is, and it's flat. You can see how this is uh, entirely flat. And in the transverse plane, this is the normal bowel. And then this is the bowel nodule. And you can see it's less than half of the, the diameter there. You can also see the nodule of DIE in the very thick vibrotic torus uterosacral ligaments um, just attached to it. But this is a curved bowel nodule, um, and so you can you have to draw a curved line following the length of it. Um, in this case, the angle here is 90 degrees or, or less, which is uh, a worrying sign. This is the depth of the nodule. Now you mustn't include the depth of the um, torus nodule. It has to be just muscularis. And then in the transverse view, you can see this is transverse bowel. And here you can see the endometriosis. And again, you need to measure as a curved line um, and work out whether or not it's uh, what percentage of the circumference you think is being affected. And we suspect bowel stenosis if you have this kind of a mushroom nodule where the angle is 90 degrees or less, or if more than half of the circumference is affected, or if the AP diameter is more than a centimetre. These are signs suspicious for the nodule in the bowel causing bowel stenosis. You can also do 3D. If you look here at the bowel nodule, I've applied 3D to it and I've rendered that. And here I've got a nice uh, bowel nodule and there is the nodule, uh, retro cervical nodule attached to it. I quite like to do 3D because it improves the view of the DIE in the uterosacral ligaments and it gives you a nice submucosal view usually. Um, you can also, you have an improved view to measure the, the width of the bowel involvement, which is, as I've said, a surrogate marker for stenosis. And you have to know that um, colonoscopy of this lesion where the colonoscope comes in this way is usually normal. So it's very handy to be able to uh, look at it with 2D, 3D and 4D. If you rotate your image around, it gives you a slightly better uh, idea that this lesion, as you can see, it's very, very retracted, um, might well be causing um, significant stenosis. So when I report on a bowel nodule, I'll say the number of bowel lesions and where they are, what the relationship of the nodule is to the torus, is it below the level of the torus or above it? What is the size of the lesion, in excluding any superficial disease, um, saying the length, depth and width, the angle of the lesion, and then whether it's likely to be stenosing or not, and if there's submucosal involvement. And that's it. Thank you very much.